Hi guys, thanks for watching. Today I will be talking about the scalp biopsy. I feel that this is important because scalp pathology is extremely difficult and if our pathologist receives a low quality sample, then we will get back a low quality report. So today I will give you some tips on how to do a good scalp biopsy. Let's go. First, make sure that your biopsy is not too small. It should be at least four millimeters in diameter. Why is it important that the biopsy is big enough? It is important because as you see in this image, in a four millimeter punch biopsy, the pathologist will see approximately 40 hair follicles. Whereas in a three millimeter punch biopsy, the number of hair follicles will be half of that what we see in a bigger biopsy and this is the case in the healthy individuals whereas in patients with hair loss usually the number of hair follicles is significantly lower and it is likely that in a three milliliter punch biopsy the pathologist will not find even one hair follicle so the size of the biopsy is of crucial importance Tip number two, it is important that the biopsy is deep enough because if we perform a superficial biopsy, then the pathologist will not see the deeper part of the hair follicles, what is important for many diseases, such as, for example, in alopecia areata. When we consider that an average hair follicle is approximately four millimeters in size, and in pathology, we are looking for the surrounding of the hair follicle, such as the inflammatory infiltrates, then it is important that our biopsy is significantly deeper than four millimeters, with five to six millimeters being the best size of a biopsy. Tip number three follow the angle of the hair shaft. What does it mean? Some of us may believe that the hair shaft is growing vertically when compared to the surface of the scalp, but this is not the case. We can see it by microscopic evaluation that the hairs are placed at an angle compared to the scalp surface. And this is also the case in pathology. The hair follicle is not growing vertically compared to the scalp surface, but at an angle. So if we make a biopsy which is perfectly vertical, then we will cut through some hair follicles. So sometimes it is good to consider following the angle of the hair shafts. Tip number four, choose the best place for the biopsy. As a rough recommendation, in patients with cicatricial alopecia, it should be the hair bearing margin, not the area of the patch, which is usually already fibrotic. And in patients with non cicatricial alopecia, it should be rather part of the patch at the margin, which is most active. Tip number five, perform trichoscopy guided biopsies. This is important for getting best possible pathology results. And I will be making a next video about the technique of making a trichoscopy guided biopsy. Tip number six is associated with the number of biopsies. Some pathologists will prefer two biopsies in a patient, one for vertical sections and one for horizontal sections. Other pathologists will cut one biopsy both vertically and horizontally and then there are pathologists who will make a decision how to cut the biopsy depending on what type of disease you suspect so it is good to discuss with our pathologists what they believe is the minimal number of biopsies in a patient with a certain disease Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more about hair diseases and trichoscopy, consider subscribing to my channel. My next video will be about the technique of performing trichoscopy guided biopsy. See you next time.